Okay, calling the Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting to order on April 13th, 2021, 11.30 something. Um, and um, I think it would be good if we could take the agenda out of order. We're still missing Saren and Ruth. Um, uh, would you like to do a roll call? Oh yeah, right, sure. Um, you want to announce if you're here, Elise? She's muted. Elise? Yes, here. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, Marty? Here. Tori? Here. Myra is here. And um, who did I miss? Ruth. 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 I see her picture, but she's muted. Oh. Uh, uh, I've asked her to unmute. I feel Ruth. like she hit. Mute. Um, uh, Ruth. Here we go. There Yay. you go. I hear you here now. Okay. Here we okay, go. You're here. This is great. And we're missing Xander and we're missing Saren. She's going to um, be late. Yeah. So, and Xander might try to come in by phone, but um, we have a lot of stuff to do. So I thought we would start with the minutes. Um, and I guess does anybody have anything that they would like to amend about December 15, January 19, February 9, or March 9, or should we do them separately? There are like a couple typos, things like safety instead of safely, and things that are real words that a spell checker didn't catch, but you probably just type them and, and you know, and didn't you know, like how you go fast and you just think that's right. But so there are like a couple things like that. And I don't know if you care. Oh, of uh, course. Yeah, no, th this is really good. Uh, I, I will but, definitely go through and, and I'll, I'll notice if, if, if it should say safety, not safe. Yeah, safety. The, the, the spell checker wouldn't have caught the few things that I caught. And the only reason I caught them is because I listened with a screen reader. If you're looking at it, safety looks like a lot like safely. <laughs> you know, it's just, and the, cell, the spell checker would not have alerted you to it. So, but there were a couple other words that were sort of like that. Okay. Um, also, um, the guy who spoke during public speaking in March, I think his name was Christopher. No, Richard. He, he doesn't live in Amherst. He lives in Hadley. Do you know his last name? Uh, I think you had him at the very bottom. It was oh, under public comment. Okay. And he, I just know he lives in Hadley, not Amherst. Okay. He okay. lives right near Amherst, but he, he's not an official Amherst resident. And um, I don't know, Elise, I don't know if you had an opportunity to read the March 9th, but it refers to the way you navigate with your dog. And I wasn't sure that oh, you would want it to be written that way. I missed that. I could read it I, aloud. Uh, yeah, that's please. Helpful. Near the bottom. Uh, give me one second. I just need to pull it up. Um, I totally missed it. Oh, that's okay. Um, give me one second. Sorry. Oh, that's, and that was the March 9th. Yeah. And that was for the discussion of the intersection? So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Whoop. March 9th. Hold on a second. That was the last one with, when he was there. Yeah, it's coming back to me. Um, sorry, just I'm just scrolling through here. So give me one second. Uh, sure. Ms. Link stated that she has low vision and needs to rely on her gu guard guide dog. It says, it says guard. It should say guide. <laughs> oh. Guide, but, guide. Yeah, but yeah. that's not. What you know, I uh, you know what happened? Be. I fixed it after I sent it to you. It, it does. It says guide. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> sorry. But also, it says. But keep reading. Uh, 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 to rely on her guide dog to hear moving traffic stated and that's she... actually not how it works but I no. didn't know how Elise would want to word that um I hear the traffic but the guide dog yeah I don't know how to word that because she no I have to hear the traffic and tell and instruct her to go forward okay that, that's yeah. really helpful. Okay, I, I will definitely fix that. Yeah, she does not do the judging. I, that's the problem is I have to be able to hear when the traffic right. stops, you know, or see a light change. And then I instruct her to go forward. Okay, great. She waits for my cue. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like the, the dog is sort of irrelevant. 
Yep. Yeah. Um, to the, yeah. I mean, the dog will help her get to where she needs to go, but Elise makes all the decisions. Unless the dog sometimes goes, no, you idiot, we're not doing that. And that's exactly. Yeah, sometimes. she did that with the elevator last week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dog does the do door that started closing. <laughs> the door started closing and I said forward and she stopped on a dime. I mean, yeah. So thank you for catching that because I I just, you know, there's a lot to read and I just missed it. Yeah. No, it's um it's fine. Okay, so um I'd almost like to skip Pomeroy for the moment. Well, um uh, Maureen, did you get the last uh, email that I sent you maybe 25 minutes ago or in it. I did, but before, but before we go to that, would you uh, all like to make a motion to approve oh, yeah. the Sorry. meeting minutes as amended? <laughs> Sorry. And you could do them as um, all of them at once. So it could be for December 15th, January 19th, February 9th, and March okay. 9th as amended. Sure. And then you'll go in and change all the little words like guard yep. and safely. And, and yep. yeah, I mean, it's a pain. I can go through them if you want. Oh, no, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, does anybody want to make a motion? So moved. <laughs> Second. Okay. To accept it with amendments. All Second. The amendments. Someone? Second. Excellent. Okay. So we can do a roll call about accepting those four sets of minutes, yep. which I have to say, Maureen, are really good. They They're are. very, very thorough minutes. Thank um, you. I, I totally want to go on record as you know, I mean, if I had to do them, they would be terrible. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, they're very thorough accounting and I appreciate the level of detail. Thanks. Um, okay, all right, uh, vote. You wanna do a roll call, we'll call the people. Oh, I can uh, um, Myra? Yes. Elise? Yes. Marty? Yes. Tori? Yes. And Ruth? Yes. Okay. They pass. Woohoo! So now we have minutes. <laughs> we have a public record. Um, boy, there's so many things in them also that we talked about, and you never know how any of it actually comes out, except we do know how the letter to the state about the handrails came out because he wrote back mm -hmm. and he basically said, We're not considering doing away with the handrails. Mm -hmm. Like that guy said that they probably were. He said, yeah. right? And then, yeah. and, then, and then he wrote back again and he told us that we have to have extra meetings if we wanna make sure that we actually consider items prior to their calendar, um, that it's not their problem to wait for us, it's our problem to get it to them on time, mm -hmm. pretty much. So right? speaking of which- um, Speaking of which, exactly. Before going on to the intersection yep. item, um, I uh, ooh, I had it written down on a post-it of who was available for holding a special meeting on April 20th. Uh, I don't have the post-it in front. Oh, wait, I do. Uh, Xander, uh, it looked like one, two, three, four, five p uh, members are available on April 20th. Do you think this is going to take a long time? I could potentially be available. I'm not going to New York like I thought I was, but um, I don't. I wrote to you last week that I can't find the information about what they want as a, whoops. Whoops. Sorry. Can you know, anybody, did anybody see, I mean, the application was there, but I didn't get any attachment that explained precisely what they want that's different. I mean, so, you know, any details. So unfortunately I didn't get a chance to go through the attachment to um, uh, um, to verify, you know, uh, that 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 all the variance requests requests are listed, and if there's a you know explanation for each of them. Um, so sorry, I, I I ran out of time. I don't know okay. if anyone else. I read. Did the anybody whole look thing. at that? Yes, yeah. I read the whole thing. It's very thorough. Well, where is it? It's it's just a continuation. It's a single document. Well, mine just ended in the middle of nowhere. Really? It said, yeah. And it, it said, uh, you know, it said attach additional whatever. And then there wasn't anything. There was no description of what uh, there's, a, there's a really detailed description. And okay. the whole thing's there. There's plans. There's a, a really nice write-up with photos. It's very well done. 
Okay. I'll have to see what happened to it. Maybe I just maybe it just opened incomplete. Or I might ask you to send it again to me. More. Yeah, I can send it again. And also I, mean, um, I, I got the basic, you know, questions one through fifteen or whatever, and then it ended. Hmm. Oh. Maybe they like the application that you're using just kind of crashed or something. I don't know. Um, weird. Uh, like, well, if you still have an issue, I could, um, you know, come up with like a lit, like a list, it's sort of uh, cut and paste all the requests so it's in one location. If that's helpful. Okay. If I can't find it, um, if you can send it, send it again, just the way you sent it. Sure. Maybe my thing wrecked it up. I don't know. I don't know. But. but uh, um, so Marty, do you think they're looking for anything that's going to be controversial? Because I need to know how much time it'll take. Um, <clears throat> in my mind, no. What they're asking for is, and I, we shouldn't get into this um, because it's not on the agenda, but what they're asking for is, is basically um, to not put in an elevator and to continue to rebuild the front entrance and not make it accessible because it's a historical piece and the accessibility in the main entrance, in fact, the entrance is in the back of the building. The, the front entrance isn't used as an entrance. Okay. All right. So well, it could take a while. Mind, it's a pretty cut and dried um, thing, but other people may feel differently. Okay. All right. That was helpful to me. Um, all right, Sarah, and you're here. Yay. Yes. <laughs> cool. I made it. Okay. Um, all right, so we can go on to wait, the wait, but, no, So uh, just to confirm, uh, uh, can I go ahead and schedule? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah. so uh, Saren wasn't here. So uh, we're gonna hold a special meeting uh, next Tuesday, which would be April 13th at 1130. And I'll send everyone the Zoom information and it's to review the variance requests for mm -hmm. um, it's, Emily it's Dickinson. It's April 20th. April 20th. Oh, yeah. what did I say? Right. Sorry. 13. So, 13. Sorry, sorry. 13. Okay. April 20th. At what time? 11 30? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so we can go on to the Pomeroy intersection. We need to have a report to the town Sur services and organization committee um, as soon as possible um, because they are gonna make their final recommendation next week. A little bit of background, the transportation access committee did vote to recommend a roundabout. Um, they did a very thorough memo um, that explained uh, where they were coming from, the TSO, Transportation Services and Outreach. I guess that's what it's called. Transportation Services and Outreach. Uh, no, I mean the Town Services and Outreach. Too many acronyms, I can't deal. Um, they, um, they appreciated the memo very much that they received from the Transportation Access Committee. And um, I think that, um, oh, somebody's looking through papers. Okay, um, anyway. So they want our recommendations as quickly as possible. It seems to me um, that the, the ducks are in a row for them to be recommending a roundabout because they didn't really have any good reason not to um, and in their mind. So the question is really, what is our job as, as the DAAC? The DAAC, in my mind, and everybody might have a different opinion, but the DAAC is supposed to make sure that we put the things on the table that need to be involved, in, included in whatever project they come up with. It's not our ours to tell them what to do. We have no capacity to do that, but it's ours to tell them whatever they do these are the parameters that you must follow in order to make it accessible and in order to follow a process that ensures that we can have confidence that it will be. And I don't know if anybody wants to change what I just said, but if you do, please let me know. Please say, so what do people think about that? This Anybody have it, any ideas that are different from that about what our charge is here? 
No. Um, um, I don't. I know okay. I gave my input um, to Maureen about what I thought. Um, to make it most accessible, it should be an intersection with uh, traffic lights and signals, audible signals is what I'm saying. Okay. Agreed. All right, so what I did was I synthesized a lot of things that I had been thinking. First, I wrote it up as a letter to the Gazette that I never sent. Um, and then, so I took aspects of it and I took some of what the transportation committee had said, although I didn't take their words. Um, but I, Maureen, do you wanna put it up on the screen? Sure. I, I think this is a working document that you might want to amend in many ways. Um, is this the brand new one that looks it like is. a memo yep. at the top? Okay. Uh, um, I th uh, hold on a second, just hold, give me a second. Um, I'm trying to make this bigger. Can, uh, can folks see this that yeah. can um, so just a very well the top doesn't it was the last email that you just sent me that I just opened so the one at the top looks like a memo at the top uh, the one the new one looks like a memo at the top the old one yeah. doesn't yeah yeah so it says to TSO yeah, from yeah. yeah 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 um and and so I guess I'm wrong that it I probably wrote organization I don't know it should be outreach um Anyway, um, so it's long, but I put, I put, I divided it up into sections about safety. I listened to and read the account of the other public hearing. Everybody was talking about, well, not everybody, but most people were talking about safety. And last week I listened to the TSO meeting and they were talking about safety. So that seems to be the paramount interest of everybody, as well as, you know, getting it to feel more like a village center and inviting people to be able to park and go in businesses and blah, blah, blah. But safety was what everybody was talking about. So I put some items under safety, then I... Um, Where to cross? From, yeah, from a blind person's perspective, I wrote this. I think most of the issues here have to do with people who cross slowly or people who can't see where or when to cross. The other people don't seem to have much objection um, you know, to it. So where to cross and when to cross. And then I put a, I think conclusions, right? Yes. Okay, I had another section, but I incorporated those things into something else. So obviously at the very bottom, I said, we voted. We, I don't know what we're gonna vote and I don't know what it's gonna come out like. I don't know what that's gonna happen, but the rest of what I put up there is I think encapsulation of what they should hear from us, including um, that I really think it's important given what happened the last time with the Triangle Street, I think it's important that the DAAC hear from them as they're going through this process of design um, of this intersection because the last time I wasn't on the DAAC, but you made some very strong, good recommendations that were not followed, and you were never told that they were not going to be followed. So I don't want that to happen again. Um, and I do think that they need to really, um, oh, one thing um, Guilford said at one of the public meetings, and I don't know which one, but in request, uh, in response to a question about the, the um, audible signals in town, none of which are working right. Um, he said that there were several, several issues. One had to do with maintenance and one had to do with um, neighborhood complaints. Um, neither of which are reasons in the law for you to not have audible signals. So that's why I put the part in the conclusion about that the town must maintain whatever they put in. Um, and I do think it's all part of what, of our job here, because I think that there are aspects of our job that are not being followed by the town. So that's why I put some things in that don't look terribly germane to the design. And if you don't want them in and you want them in some other format, that's fine. But that's why I put them there. 
Hey, so Myra, can you send this uh, draft you prepared so we can get it as an attachment and see Oh yeah, it? Maureen, do you want to send it? Sure. And uh, it thought came to my mind. So the the roundabout at the intersection of what what's that? Pomeroy Lane. No, and... no, no. The in the uh, North Amherst near Bertucci's. I mean, old oh, Bertucci's. Triangle Street. Oh, Triangle yes, Street. Triangle Street. Yeah. So that is pretty heavily congested area, Correct. and there are businesses on both sides. So maybe we can use that as an example of how it makes it dangerous for pedestrians to cross the, uh, the roundabout. Is it something we can add? Um, yeah, there are several reasons that it's dangerous for me. I don't know if Elise finds the same problem because Elise can see some of it. I, have you tried to cross there or is it just too much? Oh, no a, way. No, okay, no. you wouldn't do it either, okay. I and you live I just, in town. Yeah, I have to have, and the audible signals, forget it, all over town, they're horrible. Yep. Um, but yeah, I know I wouldn't, I avoid roundabouts. Yeah. I really do. I, I just have no way of telling whether somebody's really going to stop for me. That's then maybe, hard to know. yeah, maybe yeah. then it could be added to the letter that uh, the roundabout at the Triangle Street is a big impediment for people with visual impairments. It, it is there. Oh, it is there. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't say specifically why. Um, I could put a couple. Um, let's see, Maureen, it's under, I think it's under the conclusion part. I had it somewhere else and I moved it. Um, just and two uh, impediments uh, to uh, eliminate this problem, audible signs, signals will be sufficient? Hard to know. Depends what kind of audible signals they put in. For example, My, I know uh, there, and um, one thing that it says in the material that the director of the US Access Board sent to me, it says that they the signals should tell you what segment is being crossed and in a roundabout that's really important because everything isn't square right so mm -hmm. it's really it's hard to know where you're going so that i have been in places where you push the button on the light and when it is safe for you to cross it says safe to cross main street cross you know safe to cross main street Oh, or I safe see. to cross the other street. Or um, like if I were at the roundabout at Triangle Street, if I had been able to find the curb cut and if I did it often enough, I'd be able to find it. But it's very disorienting to know because that's not even a square intersection. So it's a terribly difficult place to orient. So the little buttons that they should have there should say crossing um, in, you know, crossing Northeast or crossing triangle street toward the northeast or something like that because it's the only way you can know and they do yeah. make things like that and i've seen them in places and Mara. that's what the access board guy said they were going to include in this yes ruth yeah um you know one of the things even with the audible signals um since i moved here a number of years ago i have complained that even downtown in the main uh intersection of amherst and you know yeah. Uh, over by there. Even with the audible signals, there's not enough time for somebody oh. who's in a, in a wheelchair or a walker yeah. to get over across the street before the traffic starts flowing again. So I, I think, you know, we need to say, you know, with adequate time. I think the, I tried uh, to say that. Yeah. Um, but I can highlight them. I can separate them out so that they're clear on their own and not subsumed into another yeah. sentence. Right, right. Okay, okay. Um, Myra? Um, yeah. Um, oh, did, uh, Marty, uh, Elise had raised her hand, okay. so let's oh, let okay. Elise. Sorry. Yeah, um, the other thing I have to say is, and I've had this problem downtown all the time. Well, it used to be better when they had like the bird chirping, 
Um, the audible signals are not often not loud enough. I mean, sometimes cars and trucks and things, especially if somebody has a loud car radio or mm. there's a loud conversation, I can't hear the audible signal. Um, it needs to be a little loud, loud enough so that um, if there is heavy traffic, one can hear it. Mm -hmm. Some of them that they make are actually um, noise sensitive, so they can make themselves louder and softer depending on the ambient noise. I don't know how huh. that works, but it does. Um, really? Yeah, they make some really amazing signals. Yeah. Um, you know, the ones that are downtown were installed in the 90s or even 80s, maybe. Yeah. And, you know, they're very, very old. They don't work and they haven't been maintained anyway. But um, they do have things in the state of the art that I've seen in places actually that are pretty cool. That's um, great. I think in Vancouver, I saw some, or, or Victoria, I was amazed. One of those Canadian cities I was in um, that, that, you know, there are things out there that work well. And also another thing about the audible signals, it will be, I recommend that they be consistent all over town. Yes. Not each one different, some working, some doesn't work, you know, so. Yeah, I don't know if they can do that, but I think that's a good recommendation to try to standardize what the town has. That's right, that's right. So you know what to expect, you're right. Thank you. Yeah, so you get, everybody gets familiar with what to expect. And then they know, especially for visually impaired people. Excellent, yeah. Marty, yeah. did you? Yeah, I, I just wanted to go back to the um, board's review. Um, if you're gonna ask the DPW to, uh, or whatever the group is that's doing this, to have the board review it, we ought to have what's called a 50% review and a pre-bid review so that we see the final bid documents before they go to bid, but we see also see the 50% where it's not too late to make some changes. Ah, okay. So spell it out precisely. So yeah, the, okay. board's, the board request, I would say the board requests a uh, fifty percent design review and a uh, pre-bid review review of the final documents. The final design documents. Okay. Yes. Oh, cool. Thank you. I didn't know that language existed. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty standard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sometimes well, they say a ninety-five percent review, but I just call it a pre-bid review. What does fifty percent stand for? Pardon? A 50%, what is this percentage? That would be, the percentage would be the percent of design completed. Oh, so, I see. You know, you don't, I see, I you see. don't design it, you, the way you do it is you design it overall and then you start adding in all the details. I see. Oh, I see, I see, okay. Wait, I'm now confused. Um, the 50% the review is once the construction has begun no, no, 50% no, no. review is during the design. Ah, Once they okay. complete 50% of it. Yeah. Okay. Of their work. So okay. by that point, you can see the overall intent yeah. and all the major things will be in. So you'll be able to see that there's um, signalization. You'll be able to see all of that, but it just okay. won't all be fleshed out. Then find the, what you wanted to look for in the, in the pre-bid review is make sure that those uh, controls are in there. Yep, and Good the idea. curbing. Yeah, and um, the curbing. And, yeah, and the particular can, I mean, domes see. and how tactile the crosswalk is yeah. going to be and yeah, how they're gonna do that and yeah. Okay. And Marty, uh, the pre-bid review, would that be at 90%? It's 95-ish. Okay, that's great. And that would be after the town votes the design, the, the town council in June will vote on which design they want. And so it would be between probably June and September or something while they're drawing up the documents that we would want them to stay in touch with us 
or the consultant who could be this woman, Meg Robertson, who no longer works for the state of Massachusetts. She just retired last month. Um, but she's a na nationally ro recognized expert actually on this stuff. Um, and, and if and she doesn't know something, she knows precisely who does. So she can find out. And if they're going to build it, they might as well do it right. That's um, right. Okay, so that's, that's really good. Um, so I don't know what this committee is really supposed to vote because if we vote that we want a particular design, um, I don't know. Do, I don't even know how I feel about the particular design. Does, I mean, so, sorry. Um, Myra, so here's a question for the yeah. committee is that, you know, there's, you know, there's the, the conversation of should it be a roundabout or an enhanced intersection? So that's one question maybe the committee wants to weigh on. And then the other question would be, uh, you know, if, if there's a roundabout you know, would you want to see that there's, you know, the the uh, the pedestrian signalized um, uh, audible pedestrian signals, and would there be sort of islands um, between um, between the uh, crosswalk um, to sort of um, reduce the length, the width of the road where you would cross. Um, and like what, what features would you want to see in place if it's a roundabout and what features would you want to see in place if it was an enhanced, um, intersection, those might be helpful. So I would, I would offer an amendment, which, what, to what you said, which, and it's what the Guilford and Chris have done wrong the entire time. They have said an enhanced intersection or a roundabout. Nobody ever said anything about an enhanced roundabout. Um, and a roundabout as one with no controls should not even be considered because it's not gonna be legal even. I mean, they could get it in under the wire, but it is not, it is not gonna be acceptable in very short order to even consider a roundabout that doesn't have some signalization. To make this a little more complicated, I'll tell you that my daughter lives in Somerville and she says there's a roundabout near Tufts at Powderhouse Circle or Powderhouse Square or whatever they call it. It's a roundabout and she said it has a light in it. And she said that as a driver, she can tell you it is incredibly dangerous because the light is in it. Because people, when a car stops three cars up from you, you don't know that they're going to stop. You think that there that that's that's why there are more rear end collisions. Guilford said at last week's meeting that there are more rear end collisions because you don't know that there's a pedestrian who's going to be crossing. So everybody puts on their brakes and there are rear end collisions. But she said it's very dangerous. And what's more, when everybody is backed up because someone's crossing or there's a light, if people are trying to get into the roundabout, they can't. And if people are trying to get out of the roundabout, depending on where they're trying to get out. They can't do that either. She said it's terribly dangerous with the signals. So I'm not sure, I, I don't know. Marty, you might know a lot more about this than I do, but I thought we had it all figured out. And she said, no, you don't have it all figured out. It's really, it's dangerous when they put signals in it. So are you kind of leaning towards uh, enhanced intersection rather than the roundabout? I don't even know. Because the enhanced intersection has problems too. They're going to put right. so many lanes in it. They're going to put a left-hand turn lane, a right-hand turn lane, and a bike lane all in this enhanced signature. You know, you said at the last meeting, Sarah, that they're going to have to take a lot of land. They are if they're going to do mm -hmm. well. Either way, they're going to have to take a lot of land, I guess. But um, crossing a very, very broad with left and right lane turn, you know, right lane turning and all that, that could be not so easy either. Elise, what do you think? Oh, you're muted. Hold on a second. That sounds like a mess to me. I don't know. I mean, I was also gonna add that, um, but it's just, I guess it's kind of a, mute, a moot point after what Mar um, Myra brought up is that a lot of times when I've seen crosswalks like in South Hadley, 
when you ring, you know, when you press the button to cross, there's like a light up thing on the crosswalk that warns drivers if there's a pedestrian wanting to cross. But uh, the whole thing sounds like a mess. I don't yeah. know, like a, a loot. It's hard. I don't know how you can win yeah. with this. It, it is hard. You know, I, uh, <laughs> in, in my email to Maureen, you know, expressing my opinion, I said, you know, we were, we happen to be at Cape Cod. They have lots of these roundabouts. They really work beautifully, very smooth, but they are in uh, intersections that are not really populated. Right. They just, you know, there is on a, on 6A or something, you know, it's just uh, it makes the traffic flow smooth. But I especially look to see if there are any businesses and people might be crossing. No, not at right. all, you know? Yeah, so it's they a very tricky beautiful. thing with high pedestrian traffic. That's right. Yeah. And that area is pretty heavy and both sides of it. Plus yeah. that a gas station too. It has lots of traffic coming in and out all oh, times yeah. of the day. I mean, that needs some work, that the intersection needs some work, but I'm not sure whether with enough controls on the roundabout that they can solve that problem. I don't know, I'm kind of leaning, my first choice would be enhanced in intersection and roundabout yep. second because of the concerns that safety concerns to pedestrians and children and mothers with their uh, babies and, you know, and those of us, yep. of course. <laughs> Ruth, yep. you said earlier that the, the, the crossings in town, the lights didn't provide enough opportunity no. to cross. So no, they don't. If, it's, if it's going to be a very, let's, let's go with Saren's idea and, and what Elise says she would prefer. If they're going to put a right-hand turn lane, a left-hand turn lane, a bike lane, and then two traffic lanes, how do you envision that working for you if you need more time? <laughs> do you need an island? Do you, what do you need? Well, they have pedestrian crossing thing like they have downtown. You know, you push the button and then it just allows you to go when there's pedestrians on the way. So, do you think um, I don't know enough about driving, but are there lights that are long enough in with that many lanes that are long enough for people who walk slowly? Can they can set the length to whatever you need? That's not a fixed number. That's not fixed. Okay, no, it's so it's not fixed. The controls determine that. It's okay, set it. So. Are any of you familiar with really long um, sequence lights that are frustrating to you as a driver that may, might, one of the things Guilford and Chris keep saying is that people run lights um, and that's how people get killed because they don't wanna wait. They know it's a long light, they're gonna run through it. That's, that's how people get killed. And that in roundabouts, people don't get killed so much because they don't run the light they, you know, the, the traffic gets slowed. Um, and so yeah, I'm just trying to figure, I don't know, I don't know mm. the best answer here because there is data about people running lights and we've all seen people run lights. Probably everybody at the table, including people I drive with have run a light yeah. at, front, at a time, but you know, um, and mostly you get away with that stuff. So I, I don't know, I, but do you, you as drivers, how do you feel about really long lights in a very wide intersection like that? <laughs> there aren't, I mean, you just have to wait for the light. Then. Yeah, yeah. Tough. I mean, it, right? it can be very <laughs> frustrating, but so what? You know? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. that's how I feel. Okay. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> That's All right. So for a very broad intersection, somebody like me would need a very clearly tactile crosswalk so that I know exactly where I'm crossing to because it's it's very broad so you don't get a sense of where, you know, you can get really messed up. Um, yeah. Um, so 
I guess I really, so are you, does somebody want to make a motion about what this committee should, uh, Maureen said two votes. So we could vote either for a singleized roundabout or an enhanced intersection. I have a question. And then <clears throat> what? A two part? Motions are hard to come by. Are hard to come uh, up with. Myra, uh, Elise has a question. Malise, yeah, um, please. Yeah, I'm just um, I'm backtracking a bit. Um, I know it was mentioned about islands in the middle because it's a really wide area, mm -hmm. uh, and I just want to like for clarity for me anyway is if you put an island there, does that mean you have to push another button to cross again? I mean, is it going to be like two traffic lights to deal with? Uh, no, uh, let me, uh, although, uh, Elise, you yeah, know, I'm confused. I, let me see. Um, I'm going to pull up an yeah. image, uh, though some of you won't be able to. You know what I, do you know what I mean? If, yeah. 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 Um, so here it, hold on a second. I need to show it. Um, hold on one second. Let me see if I can make this image larger. I can see it, yeah. Oh, can you? Sorry. Now I need to find it again. Oop. Wait, there, there um, it is. Here we go. Oops. So uh, this is an image. Can you see this, At least, yeah. There's like a circle in the middle and, oh yeah, okay. And that's where all the, tra it's four oh, ways, yeah. okay. Yeah, so this is an image of a roundabout and, okay. um, and I believe Triangle Street has these islands, um, this med their median islands. They do. And so um, where my mouse is, you could see where there's a crosswalk. Oops. There's, there is a tactile Wait, surf surface. Where's your mouse? I'm sorry. Uh, at I, the I, sort of bottom of the page. Uh, yeah, I can't see your mouse. It's really tiny. I can't right. either. But that's... Okay, sorry. Um, well, yeah. if, if, uh, can you see, okay, now I... can you see uh, the big? can you see, uh, look at, um, I see we'll look at any of the cross. Now. Oh, you see it. Okay. So where yeah, as long as it, it, the problem is it's jumping around. Okay. So if you can put it somewhere and keep it there and yeah. Okay. okay. So this crosswalk uh, shown here, oh. uh, there is a tactile surface. And so the okay. person would cross the street and they would reach this uh, median. And so, um, ah. the, and for the car, for the vehicle mm -hmm. that's approaching this island, um, mm -hmm. you know, before before the island, the road is wider, and so um, mm -hmm. they're going yeah. at a faster rate. And with the intent of the island, the median is actually because the the lane is becoming more narrow. It's actually uh, tr uh, it's trying to slow down the uh, the the motorist. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, so that's um, supposed to be, uh, you know, a safety precaution for the progressors um, crossing here. And so then um, when they're leaving the island, there's an another tactile surface and then they would cross the street again and, and get back to the other side of the, uh, of the sidewalk of the street. And so, and that's mimicked through all the, mm -hmm. throughout the whole roundabout. This roundabout is not showing any um, audio uh pedestrian activated signals but i just wanted to show you an image mm -hmm. of uh, no, the medians yeah. it helps so, to have the picture yeah um Maureen, so, what are they going to do with the uh mm -hmm. gas station because i don't know well so of, like you <laughs> can enter it and enter and exit from the um now, not the Pomeroy Lane, but the other street, Russell Lane, Russell Street, I don't know. West Street. West Street. West Street. Okay. West Street. So West you can 16. enter and um, you can enter from one and it says enter only. And then the next one you cannot enter, but you can exit. So how is like a car coming from Amherst? But they say, oh, by the way, I better get gas. And how are they going to get into that enter sign those are real that's a really good question and y you know if the town does pursue a roundabout <laughs> um and you know and they have medians that we just discussed you know they would have to figure out where would there be gaps so 
um, that's a that's a design that they would have to figure out where it, would a median make make sense there? Would there be gaps so for cars could enter and exit, like the gas station, for instance? Um, but that's something that would be worked out as part of the de design phase. So that we're not in that phase yet. We're we're just trying to figure out whether the town should. The town is trying to figure out should they hire a consultant to pursue a roundabout at the location at that intersection or or do a traditional enhanced uh you know four-way uh intersection with lights and, and if it if it is just an enhanced lighting there mm -hmm. and are they going to do consulting or just the public works is going to do their own design yeah, so the That's town would hire a consultant for either option, if whether mm. it's an enhanced intersection or a uh, roundabout. And so the you know the designer would be working with staff and uh, to such as like our you know DPW and planning staff, um, you know based on what the town council approves, and they would be working on that together and working, I would assume working with adjacent property owners because this will directly impact those properties. And, you know, they would need to have some sort of a negotiation um, if they did need to take some of their land. Um, and so yeah. that would all be part of that process. And I really like Marty's suggestion um, for the two levels of review. The town, you know, is of course, um, you know, regardless if Marty didn't say that, um, the, the design would be coming back to the DAAC among uh, various other boards and committees for review before this would be actually constructed. I have a question relating to what Saren said about the gas station and about the uh, median islands. Is it, I, I yeah. don't know anything about how this would happen, but did I hear you say, Maureen, that maybe the median would be a problem if there were, I mean, for people getting into the gas station? I, anecdotally, you know, they, I think that, uh, I don't know if it's, it, if it's a problem or not, because I'm not a, I'm not a uh, intersection designer. Um, I think it's just one of the many site constraints or considerations that need to be fleshed out as part of a design. So I, I don't think it's a, a problem. It just, it needs to be considered of how, how does that work with the design, Marty? Yeah, it's really similar to the north uh, side of the Triangle Street um, roundabout, where you make a left turn. If you're coming down East Pleasant Street towards town and you make a left turn into the bank in the box, it's, it's about the same distance as you would have in the gas station. So you'd, if you're coming, if you're going down um, 116, you make a left turn before the median to get into the roundabout. Because it's a really short distance. You mean to get into the gas station? Yeah, to get into the gas station. Aha, uh -huh. okay. And if you're coming from the south, you would just make, you would just, just do it after. Yeah. So the entrance wouldn't be at the intersection, particularly it would be at the northern end of the property. Yeah, which is where I enter all the time when I go there. Okay. Yeah. I usually so, turn. I turn in that that rear next between the gas station and Moan and Dub. I turn in right there. You've got plenty of room. Yeah. This is the gas station. I I'm, I have pulled up um, Google Google uh, yeah. Maps. Google map. Yeah. And um, yeah, the gas station is is further n south. North. North. Yeah. North. north is this the gas the gas station's north of oh the you know what sorry yeah sorry i got confused of my cardinal directions yep sorry the <laughs> gas station is north of the intersection yeah and so they could easily you know exit keep the existing exit or maybe it gets moved up more um 
use the northern entrance between uh, the the, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Think if, if they are going to put islands, then I thought the islands might be blocking the entrance and exit to the gas station from the drawing that we looked previously. So that's what it, it was a kind of something in my mind. How about if we do this? If we say we are, um, it, at the time with all the safety concerns, we are leaning toward an enhanced uh, intersection. However, uh, if we see that enough safety measures are taken, we might also be okay with the roundabout. I mean, kind of leave it vague, like we're not really saying black, no, white, or that kind of a thing. So you are trying maybe to get us to say that we would, but that you're, you're maybe gonna, you think maybe we should, should support the enhanced signalized intersection with the understanding that the town may decide elsewise, in which case the, the safety measure, you know, un, you know, the safety measures elucidated in our memo need to be considered or need to be implemented? Is that what yeah, you're something thinking? like that? You know, I mean, we don't totally rule out roundabout. There could be something there that they can place. And okay. also the other thing is if they are going to acquire land with the roundabout, which they need, because it's such a you know narrow uh, intersection. So we enhance a system. Are they going to pursue with the land acquisition as well? I don't think that's our business as a DAAC. Well, then, you know, the, the reason I uh, am asking that is because then they'll just put new traffic lights and here we go. And then they'll just put uh, pedestrian crossing. That's it. Is that what they are? Because we don't know. We are seeing more of the roundabout, but we're not seeing what they mean by enhanced intersection there. Well, no, I think they did. Um... No, they did. Maureen, you have a picture of what they have in, in mind of the enhanced intersection, right? Uh, I do. I can pull that up. And while I do that, I, uh, Marty has raised her hand. Okay. Uh, um, Maureen, I sent you a copy of, of a, a letter from a person that I've worked with on uh, and who is really is a, an excellent uh, designer for these kinds of things. Um, and my friend said that there are also pedestrian signals that are activated by, they're automatically activated. They sense that there's someone there and they flash up and show a pedestrian. And it's just so all the drivers can see that there's a pedestrian someplace. And mm. I think they should look into that kind of sensing and enhanced sensing um, equipment. I think that's great. I, that's what I was getting at earlier too. Yeah, this is this is all new stuff. It's just really just come out. Yes, there is also technology that allows you to use your iPhone mm -hmm. to activate the traffic signal. Yep. Ah. But, then, but then you have to be able to have a hand free and no gloves on to activate your iPhone. You know what I mean? So that you can make the traffic you know what I mean? So it's nice well, if you're living in a easy climate where you don't have to wear gloves and <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, I don't think it works if you tell your iPhone to activate the signal. Maybe it does. I don't know. So this, Maybe you can say activate stoplight and it'll do it. I don't know. But I'm there sure. is that stuff. There are people working on that stuff. I don't know that it, how much of it is available right now. Mm -hmm. I have this image of everybody carrying a little Alexa with them and going, Alexa, turn on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm showing a slide um, from a presentation that was given by planning staff to the town council 
on January 25th, 20, yeah. 2021. And so this is a slide for the enhanced signalized intersection and it, um, and it lists re replacing and adding new sidewalks, adding bike lanes, adding turning lanes to the north and southbound, new signals, crosswalks and curb ramps in all directions. So th these are the elements that would be included as part of an enhanced signalized intersection. And I don't think that we, uh, for our purposes, we, um, we uh, you know, I encourage the committee to, you know, make sort of general comments of what kind of elements that you want to see part of this project that would, you know, be uh, a, um, a safety improvement for accessibility or pedestrians or whatever item that you want to talk about. But uh, we really shouldn't be getting into, well, how wide is this and how wide is that? Because we're just not um, there yet. Um, and, and that's not the purpose of, of the town council's uh, review uh, um, and that that would be fleshed out once a designer is hired and, and um, more. That's true, but the width of it does have something to do with the safety of it. For people, mm -hmm. for some people, it has to do with the safety of it because, um, well, because of wide open spaces, unless the, the site, unless the crosswalk is very, very clearly tactile. Um, yes, I could do it if the but the one up the one up at UMass at University Drive is not clearly tactual. It is clearly visual. No, but it is not clearly tactual, especially if there's a little bit of ice or dirt left from the you know mm -hmm. it's 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 minimally tactual. And if you did it on a sidewalk where people have time to figure it out and find the tactual things that you need to follow, that's great. It could be on a sidewalk in a street it needs to be much more clear because you don't have a lot of time to think about it. You just have to do it. It's like clear, if you go off of this textured surface or if you go onto this textured surface, you went, you did, you know, too much. Like if, it, if the border is textured and the thing is smooth, you figure that out. Okay, I'm staying on the smooth. If you're staying on the textured, you're staying on the textured, but you don't wanna have to think about, is this really textured? I don't know. Or is that just dirt, yeah. right? Yep, yeah. exactly. You, she nailed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Thank you, Myra. Sure. So uh, I believe, was it Tori? I think Tori, no, not Tori. Saren. Saren had made a motion uh, to. Well, no, I, I didn't really make it. I oh, was okay. Saying, she I was thinking about it. You're talking it out. It okay. Yeah. yeah. So it yeah. wasn't really definite. I mean, I like the roundabout, and I know that that place is not suited for it to be a town, a south town center. It's not really equipped to be like that right now. So I'm all for revising it, but I don't know which way, but safety concern, safety is a big concern in my mind too, because I know on across, uh, uh, on at the corner there's Mission Khan, Mission Cantina, which I like very much. And then there is CB's next to that, which I also like. And then my hairdresser is on the other side, you know, and I go and get that uh, gas from that, uh, uh, what's that, a uh, Speedies. So those are really very much used. And then there's some stores on the other side too. So it's really heavily congested with businesses. Mm -hmm. And parking is always an issue when you go to Mission Cantina. And I try to find parking across the street on the, you know, not uh, uh, across the street from the, not the Pomeroy Lane. I, I forgot now what. 116. Yeah, yeah. And then there's also going to have some maybe uh, walking places and the park if the town is intending to purchase that golf course, if everything goes through okay, and I hope it will, you know, so there'll be, it, I understand the roundabout might be a better projection for the future plan. But safety is a must. So maybe we should really make sure that 
all these concerns we have, how it is going to be addressed, what they are planning to do. So I'm a little confused. I mean, I'm not, I'm not clear about what I think either, Saren, but um, you, before you said that we, sh that you were thinking about an enhanced signalized intersection with the understanding that if they vote for the roundabout, they need to look into, they need to uh, adhere to the recommendations that we have in our memo. And now I'm hearing something different. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm confused myself. Yeah, no, I am too. I you am know? too. I don't, I don't, I mean, I, mean, I thought this was much easier a month ago. I mean, I don't see how a roundabout enhances the community feel at an intersection, especially since there are always going to be cars. The, nobody's going to be crossing the, well, I wouldn't say nobody, but the, the, the crosswalks are not going to be in the middle of the roundabout. They're going to be on the edges of the roundabout. The roundabout, um, you know, so there's always going to be cars zinging by or going by the, uh, the, you know, the, the village center aspect of it. There's never going to be a time when you can just say, okay, we're going to cross the street because we have a red light. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, the town feel of it is lost. And that's one thing that Chris Brestrup said last week also, um, you know, about also, you know, how does it feel? Uh, you know, are you going to be able to put, ideally in 50 years, they would want to put the buildings closer to the street and the parking behind, which gives it more of a center feel, like a village center feel and all that. And that's not going to happen tomorrow. But she was saying that you know with a roundabout that's not the easiest thing. So, I, I don't I don't even know what I think. I think that um, does yeah. anybody know what they think? <laughs> Marty knows what she thinks. Does anybody else know what they well, think? Well, should we start at the basics? I think everyone's in agreement <laughs> that there should be, uh, you know, accommodations that are focused on making this intersection safe for pedestrians. Is that an agreement that there should yes. be like a pedestrian yes. activated yes. signals uh, that could be there either for a roundabout or enhanced intersection? Audible okay. too. And yeah. tactual, yeah, okay. So we could so say- tactual, tactual, uh, so pedestrian activated signals with audible beacons or it is, uh, well, you guys can say yay or nay. And, and then with audible, uh, I mean, with uh, tactical, um, clear, no, yes. yeah, clearly um, with um, what? What's the word you would say? Tactile. Um, yeah, but it, I, I was looking for a, an adverb that makes the tactile very um, obvious, because you can make them tactile, and you know if if, if it's you know a little bit icy, which of course it never is around here, um, you wouldn't even know that you're in the crosswalk. How about raised? Raised is the best, but that makes it a problem. But, for but wait, raised. Raised becomes an issue for people for like me. You, I will, yeah. Okay. Or yeah. press blockers. So tactile. Let's see here. I'm going to look up the definition of a tactile surface. Uh, Marty, what is what is the? Um, is there a standardized term or oh, truncated yeah, domes? That's what I was looking for. Well, truncated, truncated domes, domes are the. Um, yeah. But I. I that's not what you're looking for. I wouldn't put truncated domes there. No. Um, you have to put them on the like, cross. You put them at the, at the curb, you do, but yeah. not on the, yeah. Um, but what do you call the rest of it? What do you call the surface that we would want on, you know, for tactual clarity? Textured? Um, textured. Textured? Okay. You want a heavily textured yes. surface? Um, it depends. Well then, for Saren though, that has to be good for her wheelchair though. Right. It yeah, depends. there's always that problem. Oh, right. It's, yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, the truncated dumps would be t terrible to use yeah. a wheelchair because you oh, know you can't get do that. Caught between. No. 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 Um, you cannot do that. So wait, are you talking at the beginning of the crosswalks, or where no. are you? Where are you talking about? No, we're talking in the crosswalk surface. The actual crosswalk. The whole As thing. You're across the street. Yeah, ah, we, the can, we can surface clearly tactual, tactually demarcated crosswalks. How about that? Yeah, that's a good. Can they be a different color too? I mean, will there be clear lines or color 
Well, they can always time. stripe them. They need right? to be I mean, visually and textually yeah. different than the road surface. Uh, you know, uh, I remember uh, years ago, the Route 9, think of Amherst, uh, you're going toward Belchertown. Yeah. Uh, Amherst College put those crosswalks yep. and they are a little higher. I mean, it's not Yeah, like those are raised crosswalks. Right. So those are okay for mobility impaired people. Hey. Also, they had blinking lights, which was very good, I thought. But then the blinking lights disappeared. I don't know why. And because then, the, the weather and the plows and they don't last long enough because they they get break right. away. Hmm. Is there so any maybe, sorry <laughs> maybe there has been some improvements since that because I'm talking about at least 10 years ago. Maybe so, I don't know, but those were nice, and they would give the audio signals and uh, the blinking lights, so it yes. alerts the traffic. And I know the traffic really slowed down when there was a blinking light. Okay, well, so thing? so far I've heard that the committee <laughs> recommends pedestrian activated signals with audible beacons and visually and textually different cross. Uh, surfaces uh, for the crosswalk. Yes. And truncated domes at the ends of the crosswalks? Yeah. Well, cut. that's pretty much the law. I mean, yeah. they, everybody does that now, although they do them well in some places and not well in other places. There are some cities that have them and they're so clear. It's like, oh my God, it's amazing to cross the street here. And would uh, what are, what are folks feel about? Um, so again, this is regardless if this is a roundabout or intersection. Right. Or th these are the recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what are folks' thoughts about um, islands? Uh, which, let's see here. Mm, could there be an island between the crosswalk and crossing the road? Or um... if the crosswalk, for my purposes, if the crosswalk is clearly demarcated texturally, I don't need an island. No, me either. And I don't know if Ruth does because of the speed, like a halfway place. That's the question. Um, and or perhaps true. the town could explore other traffic calming measures. <laughs> yeah, that, that, is, that is actually the phrase they use all the time traffic <laughs> that just capsule that just is, is a blanket statement okay yeah. you, you can put one of those pot shops right before <laughs> oh, God. i was thinking that even if they widen the road there and they have the roundabout there i don't think that area is big enough for the islands although Island, right. Looks and good. bicycle lanes too. Mm, you don't right. have a bicycle lane in a roundabout. Bicycles oh. are go in the roundabout just like cars. Right. There are no bicycle lanes in roundabouts. You know, but I think the issue of the the island is an issue that's a design issue. Okay. Because the the, the road engineers will know whether you need an island or not as a place of refuge halfway across. You know, okay. in Boston there, like on Tremont Street, the, there's actually a s signal in the median strip. So you, when you cross Tremont Street, you, you cross from the one side to the center and you wait for the light and go to the other side. Where on Tremont Street are you crossing? Uh, right uh, by the common? No, it's, um, do you know where Somerset, is it Somerset Street? Do you know where the McCormick building is? By the, um, by the courthouse? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, you've got the Boston police station right below. It's right there. Okay. And you say they have a different light in the median. Yeah. Okay. You have a different, you have a call button there at the median and you wait until it activates. But the, you know, you're talking, I think there's six lanes at that point. Yeah, that's a crazy place. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's nuts, but 
they do yeah. have it because I often go and end up standing in that median. That was my question earlier about that. Yeah. But it'll be up to the design engineers. I think we shouldn't try and tell them okay. that we have to have a median. You know, okay. it's, it's really so, their expertise. So Maureen, do you want to read what what we sort of cobbled together? Well, okay. So uh, let's see here. Uh, recommends a uh, 50% Hold on a second. Just give me a second. Uh, 50 percent design review. So the the town representative and the designer should present. Uh, come back to the DAAC with a fifty percent design review, and for a pre bid review of the final design documents for uh, DAAC review and recommendations, um, and that um, regardless. Well, uh, that the inter the improvements of this intersection should include pedestrian activated signals with audible beacons and have visually and textually different cross uh, surfaces. I would call them audible signals. Beacons audible. are something else. Okay, thank you. Signals, yeah. uh, signals, and visually and textually textually different surfaces. Uh, we could tweak that a little bit uh, for the crosswalks. Um, and um, truncated surfaces uh, um, at the end of each crosswalk. You're marking the, marking the, yeah. And marking let me the, just go yeah. through my notes to see if there's anything. That's where it would be marking the curb cuts. Yes. To mark curb cuts, yep, okay. Um, to mark, but yeah, that was curb cuts. Um, I think that was it. And so this doesn't, doesn't say, hey, it, this doesn't, for you know what I just said, it doesn't say do a roundabout or do an enhanced intersection. It's saying do these items regardless. Does anyone feel strongly one way or the other that it should be, because people wrote it, you know, wrote to, Tori, you said an enhanced at one time, Sarah, and you did at one time, I did yeah. at one time, Elise did, I don't know what Ruth said, because she, she was muted the last time, but I don't, I don't know. Um, does anybody feel like we have to take a stand in favor of the enhanced signalized intersection anymore? Or um, I want to know if people want to vote on that. I'm feeling like as long as the accessibility features are there, then hopefully it will work. <laughs> The way we needed to work, whether it's a roundabout or a enhanced intersection. Will people stop even if it's a roundabout? I mean, if it has a light, signals, if you have yeah. pedestrian signals, signals, yeah, so because you're going to have a push button at the crosswalk. Okay, so yeah, and then what's the difference then? Yeah. So Myra, you were saying your daughter said this: the light is dangerous, but what about? the up flashing yield. I don't know. And also, I don't even on a bad day, we couldn't have as many cars as they have going through that. <laughs> right. I mean, that's a crazy place. I mean, you know, it's Somerville. It's like wall to wall cars. OK. Um, and we don't have that. Uh, Elise has raised her hand. Oh, uh, no, I, I think I my, my question got answered. So. OK. Yeah. So we have 15. 50, oh wait, so do we uh, want to do a roll call with these recommendations? Are you guys, do you guys feel that you're ready to um, move forward Ruth, with this? Ruth, we have didn't weigh in. 13 minutes. Ruth, how do you feel about it? Um, I don't know. For me, it's like six of one, half dozen of the other. Okay. <laughs> okay, as long as the features that we, that Maureen yeah. just mentioned that we've included are included. So at the end of the yeah. thing, I would say that the, 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 yeah, I can figure that out. Um, that we're going to take a vote and we're going to, I guess, read it as a motion so we can have something legal and then we'll yeah, just, we'll just do it. Can I, I think it's going to be unanimous because nobody's objected to it. Can I add something? Yeah. A, the, to the 50% of the design. Could we put all these uh, safety measures 
included in that 50% design. So I don't want them to say, oh yeah, we will, uh, we unfortunately, we are at the 50% and that's toward the 80% or something, you know? So we want them to think with that consideration when they start the process. You don't want it to be, accessibility should not be an add-on at the end. No. Is what, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a really interesting thought. I that's good. So really, what we want to say is that accessibility should be the paramount. The uh, safety and accessibility should be the paramount concern of any design from the beginning of the design from the beginning of the design phase, right? And yes. that's really that's what you yeah. said. Yeah. Right. Yes. I think the right thing, the right way to say this would be that the 50% design review shall include all aspects of pedestrian safety. Perfect. That's great. Yeah. That's exactly what I meant. Yep. Good. No, perfect. Great. You see, it does take a village. <laughs> So Maureen, go for it. <laughs> what do you have there? <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, I do need to tweak every it, a little bit with yeah. the wording, but uh, recommend that that uh, pedestrian activated signals with audible uh, per, uh, per, pedestrian activated signals with audible signals. I, we need to play with that and visually and textually textual surfaces for crosswalks truncated surface at the end of each crosswalk to mark curb cut uh, the at by uh you know um, the 50 percent design review shall include all aspects of pedestrian safety at the 50 percent design review uh let's see here the the town shall come back to the daac uh, for a review and comments at the 50% design review and pre-bid review of the final design documents. That's pretty good. We can play with the language, yeah. Yeah. but are people willing to vote on that? Yeah, sure. I am. Okay. Is there anyone who objects? I think we can say we voted unanimously. <laughs> yeah. Great. Right. So, yes. I, and there's six of you, six, zero. Perfect. Yeah. Great job, everyone. So I will play with the wording a little bit to make and, that and more co yeah, coherent. If you could just send me send me your wording even as a mess and I can play with it too. Oh, okay, and yeah, I, yeah. What I think um, I can put that at the bottom. That's how the TAC did it for the TSO. I'm getting the acronyms finally. That's how they did it. They wrote up all the stuff and at the bottom they put their recommendation. So we can do that at the same time. And I can change some of the words and move some of the sentences around. Does anybody have any objection to our sending the whole memo the way it is just with the vote at the bottom? I mean, with, with the changes that we've made, I would split some things out to make sure that the timing is clear to them and everything. The, the timing for the flashing, I stuck that in, this, in the part of a sentence, I could make it a separate bullet. But does anybody object to my including, to my, to my memo, as it would be amended as we discussed it with that conclusion at the end of it. No, that's fine. Really? That's fine. good. That's yeah. all right. Okay. Yeah. And um, um, uh, Myra, I noticed that the memo has some typos and just some sort of um, uh, formatting issues okay. a little bit. I'll have so, look at it. Oh, so how about you. I send yeah. you the motion? um in the near future like in the next hour and then yeah. you will do your magic and then, and then i'll send it back and you can clean it up and then i'll and then i'll put it on letterhead <laughs> and then I, I can have you look okay. at it one last time if, okay. if you want i used to say to the people at work can you pretty this up please okay <laughs> so, <laughs> prettying up is not my strong like suit okay um all right so we only have like a minute or whatever we have but i forget what else was on this oh yeah we need a rec representative to the cultural Oh, we did have that. We did have that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what else did you put on? Well, I was just seeing, did uh, Myra, uh, no, sorry, did Marty and Elise attend that meeting? In yeah, I just yeah. said it. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. How did, did it go? Yeah. It, it was pretty uh, innocuous. Yeah. 
they're talking about doing things on Zoom. Um, they, I didn't see any problems with what they were doing. They did come up, they did um, say that our town website isn't accessible. Is that true? So that's a really good segue. Is that listed on this agenda? Yes. Oh, yes. oh, well, excellent segue, Marty. <laughs> um, so the town does need to, um, we've been having conversations about purchasing a, a software program that would make it ADA compliant. And um, I would, uh, I'm, I would need to talk to our communications manager, uh, Brianna Sundard, uh, to get the more specifics about it. But my understanding is that the software would um, increase and decrease the font size and that it would automatically make any scanned PDFs into readable PDFs and that it would perhaps translate in various different languages and there could be other features I'm just I think that's just sort of the um the big picture yeah. and um so there's been discussions about making that purchase item which then dovetails into the next item which is capital budget uh, for ADA improvements and I've been having meetings with staff about how um you know we, we've been informed that the town would would uh, include ADA improvements as a capital budget, and um, they agreed that they could add fifty thousand dollars to the capital budget. And um, there'll be a presentation to the JC JCPC JCPC yeah Joint Capital Planning uh, yeah. in May. And so um, I've been talking to. Um, Rob Mora, Chris Brestrup, and Jeremiah LaPlante. Uh, Jeremiah LaPlante is our facilities manager. And so he manages a lot of our town buildings. And Rob Mora is our building commissioner and Chris Brestrup is our planning director. And so, you know, we we met recently, like last week about, well, you know, what do, you know, we, I talked about how we've, finalize the ADA plan and Jeremiah has you know real intimate knowledge of these facilities and of what he thinks could be corrected especially for uh, facilities that have a lot of users so um, such as the bang center and um, so we were talking about maybe there could be a, a physical uh, improvement done at the bang center that would have a big impact. And then there was another conversation about in this meeting about, well, the if the website was ADA compliant, that would be have a huge impact across the town um, uh, for all all Democrat for you know so many um, uh, yeah. residents and visitors going on the website. And then we talked about, well, what other sort of technology and com communication improvements could be done? So like um, the town Traffic hall. Traffic lights that he has to fix. Well, there's that, but um, <laughs> yeah. like, so meeting rooms um, should have, um, they should have assisted listening devices. So some of our meeting rooms have them, but some don't. And, you know, I've spoken with uh, Mary Beth, can't say her last name, who is our senior center director. And she often expresses the need for assisted li listening devices in their meeting community rooms. And um, there's, and then the North, the North Amherst Library, as we know, um, it needs to have assisted listening device. And the community center in the police station needs assisted listening devices. And so, uh, and then there could be signs that need to be updated that include, include Braille. So um, we were thinking maybe there could be a theme of technology and communications, or would it, that could be, that's one sort of idea, or the other idea is uh, maybe we could do um, like a, a physical improvement to a, to, to a facility um, at like the bank center. So what are, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Um, and, and I think the 
the line item will be for facilities for interior or exterior facilities. I don't think it captures at least just not yet about sidewalks and roads and intersections, um, but that could be adjusted uh, or I would need to have another conversation. How much are assistive li listening devices? It, does it require wiring into the room or is it? Um, is that's it a really like great, a that's a really great question. So I think it quickly becomes, I don't want to say complicated, but I, I think I would, uh, I would obviously need to talk to our, our IT department um, to talk about, well, what is, so in, uh, talk about what, what equipment that they would need to make it work. Um, and then how much would that all cost? So for the town room and town hall, for instance, there is, uh, you know, microphones at each of the seats uh, where board mm -hmm. members sit and all those microphones go into one system for broadcasting. And so our assisted listening devices um, that we offer there are for people that use hearing aids. So um, the this sort of device, you would, it kind of looks like a walkie talkie, you would, um, I think that the w sort of walkie talkie device communicates to your hearing, your hear the the um, the hearing device, and it automatically feeds into the town room's audible system, and so they all communicate to one another. So um, that's just giving you a snapshot of what the requirement is for that room. I don't know, and I I my guess is that might be pricey, but I don't know if that's, um, there could be less pricey options out there. So if we well, were to look Hammers into it. library one has to be taken care of by the, the project. So we don't have to worry about that one. I will say that project's being funded by a resident um, and um, that has graciously donated money to fund that project. Um, and I, it's unclear of what that amount is. Um, for instance, so uh, if it comes over, you know, over budget on some items, it'd be interesting to see what would be eliminated. But yeah, it is a requirement under ADA regulations that there should be a um, assisted listening devices in that community room. I would think the senior center to have that would be a priority mm -hmm. yes. because there's a lot of people who can't hear very well when they're oh, older. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I would think that that would be a priority. And then the website. I, yeah, I, you know, the website, it all, it all depends on what you want to achieve. It's not 100% accessible, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, I have to tell you. I can usually find what I want if I look long enough. Um, <laughs> But um, the other thing, I think those traffic lights are a big issue. The lack of maintenance of those traffic oh God, lights yeah. and, and his, his attitude toward them. Well, the public doesn't like them. So, you know, I turn well, them off. Patooties. Um, um, so I, for me, that's an issue. Me too. For me, that's really an issue. And I think the assisted listening in the senior center, I mean, I, it's just me. Um, the website has issues um for disability i don't know if you're able to read it physically elise are you the, what is it the the town website i haven't been on it in a long time so i couldn't okay. tell you okay uh, yeah you know i did find the no i asked i i went to siri and told her to get me what i wanted i just couldn't there's a lot of stuff on there there, there is a lot. It's it's not it's not the cleanest thing in the world, but I can say no. I've seen it. It's I've, it's very busy. I've looked through worse when yeah. you can't even push the buttons and nothing ever happens. I mean, on the web this website you can usually get what you want, but you have to okay. figure out how to find it. Yeah. It's the figuring out. It's not intuitive, what... but it's it's <laughs> um I don't know. What do other people think? I think it's important that they update the website. It's it should not be it should not yeah. be accessible. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I mean, it's very difficult to follow the website. Uh, actually, I agree with all of you. Um, not that uh, I find it difficult visually, but it is like I want, I always pay my real estate taxes and my utility bills online. And I always have difficulty. Where did I click this? What do I yes. need to do? That? And once you put the, that's account right. number there you can just get in there but it's that's right the easiest. the problem with the website is not so much how it the the way the the accessibility features for me it's the intuitive features whoever wrote it isn't thinking like the public thinks and i'm not yeah. sure i'm not sure that buying software is going to fix that because it's who whoever's whose ideas decided how you get from point A to point B are the problem with the website. Yep, right. agreed. It's yeah. not user friendly. No, no it's not. We're yeah. running out of time, but I, I know Marty raised her hand. So why don't we have Marty speak and then I, we're gonna, I, I personally need to move on oh, to maybe the next Maybe we can meeting. finish this next week anyway. I would maybe recommend that we, that we ask the town to buy the software. Um, currently the website I understand doesn't meet ADA. And that poses a risk to the town. Um, you don't want to deal with an ADA complaint because we, and there are people out there that are going after um, institutions that don't have an accessible website. So you need to meet the letter of the law. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Okay. But again, if we're going to buy a website, if we're going to have anything to do with it, the DAAC has to have some input because I can tell you there are lots of companies and I've dealt with them that say, we used XYZ software, we did all the compliance, we did this, we did that. And I said, that's nice, it doesn't work. Don't and get I said, me started on the Jones. Let me talk to the programmers. And a few times right. I have gotten to the programmers and they go, oh yeah, I see what I did wrong. But, but the, the mm. public relations arm is we used this and we comply with this and we, you know, and they don't. So the, the software is mm. not gonna solve the problem. It's the beginning of solving the problem, but it's not gonna solve the problem. All right, folks. Well, uh, so we do have a meeting next week, the 20th. Right. Um, and I will send out an agenda with the Zoom information uh, okay. once that's, um, Okay. Once that's up. All right. Well, well thanks thank and you. have thanks, folks. Thank, thank you. you. All right. And Maureen, you'll thank send you. me that in the yes. next hour and then I'll play with it today and send it out to you tonight. Perfect. Thank you. So okay. Bye. Thank you.